How do you know if your computer or laptop will run Minecraft? Well, I'm hoping I can answer this question for you and help you out. This is actually a little trick that I actually always use to, um, well, to know, I guess. It's quite simple, and it all comes from a website. Yeah. So I'll show that in just a bit. But before I progress into that, I will say that when it comes to running Minecraft, there are a couple of things that are very important. Um, the number one thing when it comes to running Minecraft is you need the processor to be good enough. A graphics card can be helpful, but it's actually not near as important. Of course, it is important if you're going to run shaders, so you'll definitely want that. But as far as just running Minecraft, like the default Java vanilla, what I'm running right now, or even, you know, like Windows 10 version or whatever, it's all about the processor. The RAM, of course, helps too. I would say an absolute, absolute minimum of two gigabytes, but really you want to have a minimum of four gigabytes because you want to have at least one gigabyte of RAM to run Minecraft, one gigabyte of RAM to run um, also your other computer processes. That's why you want two gigabytes. But really, there's a possibility that Minecraft might require more. You might want to allocate more RAM for one reason or another. You really want to have at least 4 gigabytes of RAM. And to be honest, most laptops are being sold nowadays tend to have that as the minimum anyways. So most likely this won't be a problem to come across. Of course, you might be on older laptops that you're using. And older laptops, laptops do technically sometimes have more difficulty, difficulties running Minecraft because of outdated drivers or, you know, update drivers, by the way, that helps. Or, you know, just outdated technology. And so it's typically worth it to just go ahead and get a newer computer. Um, so anyways, let's move into this little trick that will help you understand what will run. It's really awesome. Let's go to this website. Yeah. Da 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 da. Yay! This is the website, Passmark Software. And I will put a link to this website in the description below. This is a wonderful website. I've looked at multiples and this one seems really spot on as far as, far as benchmarking the performance of processors. Now, I will let you know that Different programs use processors in different ways, and so different programs will function differently based on different processors. So it's never going to be perfect, but it can be pretty close, and I think this place is really close. So what you want to do is come to this website, and you're going to come down and click on the high-end CPU chart. Now this is pretty cool. I mean, look at these benchmarks, benchmarks for these different processors. You can scroll all the way down and find your different processors. So like my desktop computer, the processor, uh, right here. Here's my processor right here. 3900X. You know, pretty good. Look at that benchmark, 32,000. And it really is awesome. I especially like it for rendering videos. It's really fast. But, I mean, like my laptop. Where's my laptop here? You know, something that can actually help. When you're looking for your processor, what I do is I come to this area and do Control F and then type in your processor. Iris, oh, it's not showing up. It should. Oh, well. Maybe it doesn't work in full screen mode. I'm using full screen mode right now. Maybe I shouldn't do that. But, um, yeah, you just control F and look for your processor and find it here on the list. And it'll give you a benchmark. And it's important to know, like, the full name and even, like, the hertz and everything. And the generation often of processors really does make a difference. You know, especially with Intel. There are different generations, like 3rd or 4th gen. Uh, those aren't very good processors. Like 10th and 11th gen, yeah, they're good. Look for the generation. So anyways, we're talking about where we need to go to to know where this limit is for where processors are run. This is what I like to tell people. And now, I'm, instead of just telling one or two people I'm trying to help out, now I'm trying to tell the whole world. I like to scroll down to the very bottom, to the very bottom processor, and I like to stick above this processor. Now, we processors below this, which will be in a tab that we were at before, will still run Minecraft, but at less in performance. I like to keep above. So if you keep on this list, it's going to work out for you. Anything this or above. And if you're wanting to buy a laptop and you want to know what kind of processor to get for, to run Minecraft, seriously, look at this list. And the prices right here on the side are mostly accurate, not completely. If you see not available, it's usually because you can only buy it with a unit. It's not something you can buy separately in the market. Um, you can look at, you know, where some te tend to have good deals. I mean, look at this. Look at the difference pr in price between some of these. This is like less than half the price and an increased performance. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I really like this list. And you know, this isn't just for CPU. It's also for video cards. 
Now, like I said, for video cards, it really doesn't matter as much, but if you want a good overall, well-rounded laptop, not just for Minecraft, again, I'd say stick to this list. However, um, some of these graphics cards, uh, coming down here, we're starting to get pretty low. Try to stay above 3,000 if you can. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Some of these graphics cards, the reason why they're priced high potentially is not just because, you know, it looks like it has a little benchmark, but there are other things they can do with performing different tasks, which make the, you know, cost more. There, there, there are reasons why some of these cost more. Now try to stay above 3000 for a graphics card. Isn't this a cool list? Just look up your graphics card. I look at this all the time. I really do. Like when I was going to buy my computer, I, I studied and I feel like I basically memorized it. I didn't actually, but... I, I really looked over it quite a bit. Good list. But yeah, if you go to your... your so there's high-end. High to mid-range is still pretty good for CPUs for Minecraft. Um, I guess I would stay stay above 5,000. until. Quite. Yeah, see, some of these are decent. Some, some of these are decent processors. They'll still run Minecraft fine. Try to stay above 5,000. Here. Even some of the 4,000 would still run it decent, but I'm just telling you that you'll appreciate being a little bit higher. Especially if you end up, you know, getting more involved in Minecraft and starting to add mods and then do shaders, which I want a good video card for. Yeah. Okay, well, that's all I had there. And I'm hoping that it was helpful to you. But if you have questions, you can ask me. But I will for sure put the link to that website in the description below so you can go peruse it. You'll probably end up bookmarking that website and using it the rest of your life. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, well, that's all.